in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. A bitterly cold fall has descended on Peyton Place. And with the sudden turn of the seasons, Martin Peyton has come down from his house on the hill. The entrance of his limousine into the square heralds an extraordinary event. The man who is the symbol of the town, whose antecedents once owned and ruled all of what is now Peyton County. This man, Martin Peyton, is stealing himself for a rare public appearance. He will testify for the prosecution in the preliminary hearing of Lee Weber, accused of the murder of Ann Howard. Martin Payton has spent most of his mature years walking away from questions. Questions about his personal life, about his control of the town, about his manipulation of human life. Now, District Attorney John Fowler has forced him to submit to an interrogation. Martin Payton knows that his answers could determine the course of countless lives for many years to come. Sit down a second. Listen, can I get you something, uh, uh, some some water or something? Brandy. Hello, Mr. Payton. Rodney, you're right on time. Hello, Mr. Fowler. Will you excuse me a minute? Certainly. Well, how are you feeling, Mr. Payton? Oh, well enough. How long must I wait to perform this public service? Oh, just a few more minutes. Could I get you something, a glass of water? Why does everyone want to drown me with water? Do I look like a fading flower? Hello, Doctor, this is Rod. Listen, my grandfather and I are at the courthouse. Well, I thought he wasn't going to testify until later on this afternoon. Yeah, so did we, but uh, those plans changed. Look, I, I know this is short notice. All right, listen, it'll take a little juggling here, but I'll be down as soon as I can, huh? Eh? Oh, thank you, Doctor. I certainly appreciate it. Well, I'm your grandfather's physician. If he feels strong enough to testify, I suppose the least I can do is stand by there. Look, he'll probably draw a crowd, so you better save me a seat, huh? Oh, you bet. And thanks again. Come on in, please. Right. Stephen. Uh, Betty, why don't you go on in, too? I'll be in in a moment. You got a moment, John? Excuse me. Why are you putting the old man on the stand? Well, that's a rather strange question. Do you really think it's going to mean anything? What are you worried about, Stephen? You're just putting Peyton on the stand as some sort of blind, offensive move, a wild attempt to block whatever I get out of my own witness. You mean your mother? Oh, come on, John. Mrs. Court is my witness. You know that. That's the only reason you made Peyton your witness. Maybe whatever you get out of the old man will somehow contradict whatever I get out of Hannah Court. Now, that's pretty far out thinking. It's curious that you seem to be so bothered about it. You're wasting your time with the old man. Are you asking me not to put him on the stand? No. I wouldn't miss the chance of cross-examining him for anything. Mrs. Harrington. 
I'm sorry. I was a million miles away. You're more than that. It's kind of dead in here, isn't it? Yeah, everybody's over at the courthouse. Yeah, I know. Here, would you? Would you stash these? Mm, sure. Where? I don't care, but be careful with them. How come you're so nervous? I'm not. It's just that those are my good books, and I won't be able to sell them at the end of the semester. They got ketchup and mustard all over. Nobody wants to be reading a modern European history book and turn the page and there's a hamburger. Do you want a cup of coffee? No, I can't. Grandfather should be about ready to take the stand. Norm, you cut a class. Yeah. But you wouldn't believe this. I really didn't want to. I don't know. I reached out to open up the history class door and... I don't know what happened. I just turned around, walked out of the building, jumped in my car, and drove to the square. But when I saw the courthouse, I changed my mind and came here. If you don't want to go to court, why don't you go back to school? I can't. It's that simple. I feel like such a phony. Here I am, rushing around to see a man that I yelled at, talked back to, and made jokes about. Norm, I never asked you to cut yourself off from your grandfather or anybody. I know, but it's how I feel. I want my own family, just you, me, and Rod. No obligations. Everybody at the Peyton house, would, well, they kick me around like it was a football. And I don't want to go crawling back. Is that what you think you'd be doing by going to court? Crawling back? Yeah. But Norm, Mr. Peyton's your mother's father. You can look at it that way. You mean... If I went to court, it'd be out of respect? Sure. We went to your mother's grave, didn't we? Yeah, but that was different. Mm-mm. He's your mother's father. You know why I came here? Why? To hear you say that. Because that's exactly what I was thinking. And I just need to hear it from you. You know what the rules of the day will be? What? One, no food on my books. <laughs> okay. Two, no studying tonight. Why? Well, I'm just going to do a lot of hugging and kissing. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Mr. Payton, how long have you lived in Payton Place? What kind of a fool question is that? It's a routine one, Mr. Payton. It's a foolish routine. I'm obliged to ask it all the same. How long have you lived here? I was born in Payton Place. I lived here all my life, except when my health forced me to reside in Boston. Are you acquainted with the defendant, Lee Weber? Acquainted? Have you met him? In a fashion, yes. And are you aware of the fact that Lee Weber is accused of the murder of Anne Howard? Of course I am. For a county attorney, you ask some remarkably inept questions. <laughs> well, Mr. Payton, we have had testimony before this court to the effect that Anne Howard was in your house shortly before she was found dead on the rocks at the foot of Sailor's Bluff. To the best of your knowledge, is that correct? Yes. Do you know what Anne Howard was doing in your house? Anne Howard came to see my housekeeper, Mrs. Cord. Hannah Cord? Mrs. Hannah Cord. And now may I ask another remarkably inept question? How long has Mrs. Cord been in your employ? Mrs. Cord has worked for me for almost 30 years. Is it correct to say that you know her quite well? You may make that assumption. Should it be made, Mr. Payton? Mr. Fowler, I have just informed you that Mrs. Cord has been in my employ and in my house for a period of time which almost equals the narrow span of your narrow life. You're not demonstrating any ability. I'm not on trial, Mr. Payton. You're before the court, just as I am. Has Mrs. Cord been a dependable or reliable employee? She has. And in all these years, would you say that she's demonstrated that she has a stable character? Objection. 
counsel is leading the witness. Sustained. Strike the question. You need not answer that, Mr. Payton. How would you describe Mrs. Cord's character? I should uh, describe Mrs. Cord's character as stable. Objection. The witness is not, to my knowledge, qualified to pass judgment on the stability of anyone's emotions. Objection denied, Mr. Cord. This court feels that a relationship of 30 years is sufficient qualification for the witness to venture a general description of Mrs. Cord's personality. Mr. Payton, you stated that uh, on the day of her death, Ann Howard came to your house to see Mrs. Cord. Why did Ann Howard want to see Mrs. Cord on that particular day? Because apparently, Ann Howard had just learned that she was Mrs. Cord's daughter. Ann Howard had come to see her mother. And how do you know that, Mr. Payton? Because I was there, in the house. I heard them talking. You observed them? Yes. Would you please describe for the court exactly what you saw? Describe what I saw? Is that necessary? You must answer the question to the best of your ability, Mr. Payton. Well, what I saw was of minor importance. Two women reunited. Eyes were red, handkerchiefs were wet. The rug was damp with the maudlin tears of mother and daughter. They were awkward with each other. But who wouldn't be under similar circumstances? They were embarrassed. There'd been tears, lots of tears. Mother and daughter had discovered each other at last, deeply touching. But an event of no importance with regard to Anne Howard's death. Then in your opinion, Mr. Payton, Anne Howard was not emotionally disturbed when she left your house that day? Do you wish to allow that question, Mr. Cord? I have no objection, Your Honor. Sorry, I'm late. Yes, well, uh, so far, Mr. Fowler, would you receive the question? Doing okay. Mr. Payton, in your opinion, was Anne Howard emotionally disturbed when she left your house that day? In my opinion, Mr. Fowler, Anne Howard was emotionally exhausted. In my opinion, Anne Howard was ready for a warm bath and a good night's sleep. Thank you, Mr. Payton. No further questions, Your Honor. Do you wish to cross-examine the witness, Mr. Cord? Yes, Your Honor. I would like very much to cross-examine the state's witness. <laughs> Mr. Payton, are you all right? Easy, just relax. I, I wish to, to lie down. Your Honor, could I take him in your chambers, please? Certainly. Come on, get my EKG machine into the car. Recessed for 15 minutes. Mr. Cord, I'd like to know where, where I fit into all of this. You? Yes, me. I'm the guy they're, they're trying to send up. Or have you forgotten that? Stephen, can I talk to you? Look, Counselor. All right. Counselor. Don't. Don't make me the forgotten man here. You're not forgotten here. You're not forgotten and you're not forgiven. Forgiven? Court, if you try to sell Don't me out... Don't threaten me. Don't you ever try to threaten me. You think I like sitting next to you at that table? Now, the jury is still out, Lee. My jury. 